Hi everyone. I'm Sandy Myers here back. Um, I am part of Stacy and I do the fashion girl videos. Today though, I'm doing a video as part of like a part two kind of video on I did a video on how to make money with your hobby or craft. Um, did you ever think about making money with whatever hobby or craft that you do? Because there is opportunities out there to make money with that. Okay. So what I'm going to tell you today is I'm going to try not to leave, you know, do this really long. The first video that I have done about how to make money with your uh, hobby or craft, um, I will put the link down below to that video. If I forget, just come back on to Sandra Myers onto my um, channel and um, it's only a couple videos down. You'll see a picture of my stand and that's where you'll be able to find it there. If I remember, I'll try and link it for you. All right, so the premise of today is I just wanted to let you know that I did have a craft show, uh, actually not this past weekend, but the weekend before, and it's a fall craft show that I do every year. I have people that do follow um, my pages and know where I'm going to be at, and um, just to give you an idea on how to sell basically when you do craft shows and markets making money is all about how you present your products how you sell to people um you know it, it's just it's it's a routine that i have gotten into for over the last 12 years or more um to learn how to keep customers. That's your, your number one thing. Um, I'll be honest with you. This last craft show I did absolutely fantastic. This show, I might walk away with $250, $300. And you're going to say that's not a lot of money, but it, it is. I sell soap, remember at $5 a bar. So that's a lot of soap creams, healing balms, that kind of thing. And that's what I'm going to go into with you a little bit. Okay. I almost, I, I just about doubled my sales for the day. So it was a fantastic show. But in order to do that, there's things, little things that you need to do in order to get your customers to get into your stand. Um, to learn how to talk to them. Okay. So here's what I'm going to, here's how I'm going to start this out is you can take your craft, your hobby, um, anything like that. That's what I'm going to focus on today because that's what I do. I do a craft. Okay. I make soap. So when I go to the craft show, the first Thing you want to do when you go to your craft show or a farmer's market. Set your stand up if you have to. At home, take a table, put everything on it in the way you want to set it up to make it look enticing. Whatever theme, this was a fall craft show, I put fall leaves on it. Make sure your items are enticing as far as visible if you're doing something with designs you make them sure they're all visible um you know just just go with it place don't just like throw everything on the table you know do your little categories one you know it, if you watch the other video you'll see the soaps in like in wooden things on one area. Um, my creams are in one area. The creams and my healing or my uh, everything bombs. Okay. So that's number one. You want an enticing visible stand or table for people who want to come in and look. 
that's your number one. You're not going to sell if you don't get people to come in and see what you have. Now, there may be shows where there will be six people with your item. And and everybody says, oh, I'm not going to sell. No, it. what I'm going to tell you today is going to help you get people in in order for you to make money. Okay. Now, number one is on your list. Set your stand up, your table, make it presentable, have your stuff organized. That's number one. Number two. Your other basic thing is know your product. You're, pro you're going to get 50 million questions out there. Even if you're selling a mug or tumblers or, uh, you know, because the, I have a cricket too. You know, cr things made with cricket today are, are huge, especially the tumblers, the mugs, glasses. I, I, I mean, just 50 million things with cricket today. You need to know your product. If someone says to me, what well, is this going to last? Or um, I love the design. What other designs can you do? You know, explain to him, explain to your customer what exactly your product, you know, like mugs, can you wash them? You Before they even ask, volunteer that information. Say, okay, I have this, just like myself. People will say to me, okay, well, how long does it last? I tell them they have to put it in a, like a dish with waves or something in for the water to drain and your bar of soap will last. They will ask me about the ingredients. Um, all of my ingredients are on the back of my soap. Uh, you know, that's the kind of questions they'll ask me, know the answer. You don't have to tell them, oh, I put so many ounces of olive oil. I put so many, you don't have to go into all that detail. Tell them about the bar, especially this bar of soap. It's carrot, orange, turmeric. What is it good for? It's antiviral, antibacterial. Turmeric is very good for brightening the skin orange sweet orange oil i use in this okay which is very good citrusy vitamin c um there's organic carrot juice in this bar of salt carrot juice is fantastic inside and out for you these are the kind of things you need to tell them when they pick up a bar of salt okay that's number two know your product all right Number three actually should have been number one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it at number three right now. When you when someone approaches your stand, don't sit there like like this and just watch them looking at the soap or at whatever your product is you're making. You know, it's one thing, let them approach the stand, let them look. But then get you can get up and say explain your product you don't have to again you don't have to go into detail by sitting there and letting you're not even acknowledging them that they're at your stand i go oh hello how are you today or sometimes if i see them come and they start to look i will get up from my chair usually i'm not even sitting i'm already standing because I watch who comes to my stand, you know, my, you know, I let them look a little bit, um, but then I'll, here's how I start. If you would approach my stand, I would say, hi, how are you today? And they say, oh, fine. And they're just kind of like browsing. I'll say, oh, they'll say so many scents of, of soaps or whatever. And, and so I'll say to them, and what is your scent? What do you like? Do you like florals? Do you like fruity? Do you like refreshing? What is your go-to scent? And I start a conversation from there. 
and they'll say, oh, I like florals or, I, you know, I like something very soft or whatever. And I just go from there. And you would be surprised because you're giving them a one-to-one -one mini evaluation of what they would be interested in. So you need to talk to people. I've seen so many people just sit there and let them watch. If you don't talk to them, they'll just walk away from the stand without anything. All the people that come to my stand, because of the fact I talk to them, I'm per I, I try to be very personable with them um, to find out what their likes and dislikes are. I answer all their questions about the soap. Again, knowing your product is very important. Um, very rarely, out of all the people that come to my stand that I talk to, walk away without anything. It's because of the interaction with people. Okay, they're, they're kind of like my top three. All right, having items at price points that will sell. I understand that if you have items, mine, mine are nice little items that people can afford. Okay, $5 for a bar of soap, $5 for cream, $5 for lotion, whatever. Okay, so then, you know, if your item is a higher price point, explain to them why your item is a higher price point, the work that goes into it, whatever. You don't have to tell them all of your secrets. You just explain to them that's the reason why. Okay, so. I have things that are all different prices and what things sell. Number one, my soaps sell. Now, not all the time. There's some people that are, will say, I don't do well with handmade soaps. I only can stick to this soap, whatever. Okay, that's fine with me. That's, I don't have a problem with that. I do sell. You need something to make up for another item. I do sell an everything balm. It's made with lavender and rosemary. And it's kind of like, that's what it's for, an everything balm. I learned it how to make, I learned how to make that from um, an Amish family down in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And smells wonderful. It's essential lavender oil and rosemary oil. Both oils together are very good healing properties. I make no claims on this. All I know that I like it for putting on the heels of my feet, um, hardworking hands. I like to put it on cuts, scrapes, burns, rashes. That's what I like to put it on. Okay. The only thing you can't put it on your lips your, and of course other personal areas if I, if you know what i mean but otherwise um it's very nice i i even put it on my tattoo in order for it to um you know to moisturize it and bring the colors out a little bit that's why it's called an everything balm this is a two ounce jar i open it if i see they're not really interested in soap i will have a lot of these on hand at five dollars a jar i have little wooden spoons that i can throw away i take a little bow put it on their hands i tell them what it's for if they don't buy soap i guarantee you they'll buy a jar of this for five dollars now you start adding up five dollars a jar at 20 jars two times five is ten that's what a hundred dollars just on this so if you're not selling the soap, I, I sell this. Or if I see it's a crowd where they're not interested in soap, they're interested in creams or lotions or balms, I'll say, would you like to try a sample of this? And so I give them samples. I use, I tell them it's all, most of it is locally sourced, except for the um, fragrance oils. Uh, 
it does have sunflower oil, beeswax. I use local honey from where I live, and I do tell them that, and they love that when you tell them that you use local products from where I live. So that's another way of making money pretty fast. If you get people that don't like one product, suggest another product. Same way with my creams. I make a goat's milk lotion, or it's a goat's milk cream. All right. This is this is unscented. This comes in an unscented base, lotion base, that I buy from a company. However, I add the goat's milk powder to it. You have to be careful. Or you can buy creams with goat's milk already in it. That's your prerogative. Okay. But it's the ingredients that I add this to it to make it my own. Because there's certain little ingredients that I don't, you know, there's certain ingredients that I add in here that make it special. Okay. So for instance, this is another two ounce jar. This is. I have this one made of pink grapefruit because I like to use it for my face. Okay. It is, it's very moisturizing. Yes, I don't have a wrinkle and I'm not afraid to say it. I'm 63 years old and I do use this goat's milk lotion and I, I make my own with pink grapefruit because it's very good for cell regeneration. Okay. This jar, I make three different kinds at this point. I make cherry almond fragrance. I make um, honey almond. And I made a new fragrance this time for the show, oats, milk, and honey, which I make a goat's milk soap with oats, milk, and honey. And it's called like grandma's old fashioned recipe or whatever um, in the soap. The oh, I think I made about 10 jars of oats, milk, and honey, and it flew out of my stand like crazy. Everybody's saying, how can you make out at $5 a jar? You can. Be very thrifty. Watch for sales on fragrances. Watch for sales. It, what, again, whatever craft you're doing, watch for sales where you get your items because you will make money back from this. I, you're saying, how much money can I make off by the time you buy your jar? Again, watch your sales. By the time I make my jar, my lotion, I make it all very well. And if it's, it's also quantity. You want to price something that you know you're going to sell and what you would pay for it. Now, I'm going to say a remark, and I don't want everybody to get offended with it. Don't be greedy, okay? And, and what I mean by that is, yes, there are some people that could get $10 a jar for this, but I sell mine for five. Someday I might have to go up to $6 a jar, but that's affordable. In this day and age, people are lucky they have money to eat for their rent, for whatever. And I'm trying to do something that people can afford and that I can sell and I can still make money from it. Now, don't forget, I don't do this for a job. This is just a hobby when I'm not taking care of my daughter. That is my job. I have a degree in medical assisting. Um, and, you know, I take care of my disabled daughter. And she kind of has a little therapy, helps me put some labels on the front or something like that. Or my official smeller, as I call her. Okay. So what we do by selling all these products, that's how we go on a vacation every year. I save all the money. I don't do a whole lot of shows or markets. You know, if something pops up and I have stock, I'll do it. But I don't do this quote as a job. Okay. I do it for extra money and for our vacations. That's what I do it for. So as far as products, do something, price your products wisely. And I know you're saying that's too low. 
Okay, it depends on the area that you live. If they're getting eight to ten dollars a jar in your area, by all means, price it at that. In my area, they aren't unless you're putting them in a specialty store or something like that. That's a whole different that I'm not even getting into on consignment and all that. Okay. Um, so if you go to craft shows and markets, price your things accordingly to what you're going to make out on it and what you're comfortable on making out on it and what the price is in your area. All right. That is the way that I, that I sell. Okay. That's the way I make money. If, if I go even to a, a simple little farmer's market and make, pay $20 for the space and come out of there with $200, I'm still happy. Take the $20 off, that's $180. That's still $180 I didn't have before. And my stuff would be sitting there. Don't make your setup complicated. If you have a quick shade, a quick shade and a folding table, that's all you need. Some people just have an umbrella and a folding table. You have to be careful because I have not just the creams, but I have soaps to worry about because I, this is cold process. This is hard. It's cured for six weeks, but I also do make glycerin soap. Not a whole lot, but I still make it. So I have to be careful and have to be underneath so that away from the weather and the sun but even don't don't discount in the back of your mind some of the little shows well i did a little show with my daughter in the spring um it was at an ice cream it was at a creamery and um zero to set up zero fee just whatever she wanted who wanted to come could come set up she didn't ask for a percentage nothing it was probably for about maybe i don't know five hours we were there i made a hundred dollars zero dollars for space fee i just took what i had made i did make some tea towels with my cricket and things like that and someday i'll show you some other things that i make um didn't sell any tea towels, but I did meet a wonderful family that loved my products. They probably bought close to, I don't know, $30 worth of stuff, maybe more because I made a little over a hundred, maybe 110, something like that. And they said, we'll follow you. We, we love the smell. We're going to try it. Guess what? They came down to the last show that I did that I was talking about, the fall show. They actually did come down to my stand and they spent another $40 to $50 at my stand. So I have customers now. So don't worry about what, how small a craft show is. The next tip, what am I on? Four, five. Okay, next tip. Watch your space fees, okay? Because your space fees will definitely eat up what you think you're going to make at that show. Nobody ever knows what they're going to make at a show. This last one that I just did, I always have Pacholi soap made. It's called Pacholi Dream. It's cedarwood, sandalwood, Pacholi, cedarwood, and sandalwood with activated charcoal. I had six people ask me that day for Pacholi soap. Had zero bars made because they always sat there so you just never know okay um but again you know i guess what i'm trying to say is know your product talk about your product and you will sell you just never know you know as far as space fees like if you think like there's shows i've done a space fee 90 dollars, which was a wine festival i would walk out of there and probably break even 
you know, so it's hard to tell. Do some research on the show or the market that you're going to. See if there's crafters there. Um, you know, the only the only thing I could say if it's if it's under fifty dollars, try it for the day. See what kind of crowd. Feel the crowd out. See what kind of people come to your stand. Are they interested in your product? What you make. And hand my handmade items is what sells. They'll go to a warehouse and buy things that are already handmade. Yeah, people sell them, but you know, a lot of the times I have a tax number because I guess where I get my bags and things from. You will see tons of stands where people just go to the warehouse, add two or add two or three flowers, and they go to a market and sell them. And they do, a lot of them tell little fibs and say, yeah, so I was in the garage for a teen amount of hours making this. I can't do that. To me, that's deceiving people. And I'm not a fan of that. If you're going to make it handmade, make it handmade. If you're going to buy it somewhere, tell them. Say, I get my item, but oh, I, you know, I do like fix it up with the flowers and, and all of that. You know, this is my base item. I, and this is what I do. And I know people don't agree with me on that. That's just my general opinion. I'd rather tell the truth. Make, make the item. Um, that's just my opinion because that really aggravates me when they say they made the whole thing and I've been in a warehouse and seen it there <laughs> you know I, I I'm not saying there I mean I guess I'm looking at the craft end of it of the whole selling situation at fairs and markets I'm looking at the craft and the hobby end of it now if you have a hobby um which could be trains my husband he was into trains or coins or that kind of thing by all means again all of those tips will still apply know your item know your product know how how old it is how rare it is how you you a lot of people will go and set up a stand and just throw it out on the table and just not know their product. Like you're not going to make money like that. Okay. So those are, those are my major tips on how I sell at craft shows and like farmers markets. Flea markets are really iffy. I try to tend to stay away from flea markets unless you're selling used you know unless you're selling used items and like things like that that's fine but if you're into crafts or hobbies i would stay away from flea markets and another thing i'm not a big fan of is consignment i've had a lot of questions people ask me about consignment do i do consignment i've tried consignment twice and got burned twice on consignment because and what can really what consignment is um both places had shops i would sell them a cream like this for half half the cost and to be honest for them to get us okay just say this is five dollars i know what i have to make what it costs me to make a jar so i would probably sell the majority of this for three dollars because i sell it for five in a consignment shop they could sell it for eight so they could make more money however some of these consignment people want this dirt cheap no i'm sorry mm -mm. be very careful on consignment shops they also besides the fact some people even take a percentage of what you you sell in a shop. I'm not saying you could try it, 
but I just never, and my stock sat there on shelves on ending times when I could have been out selling my stock on my own to talk to people. Again, that's where I, what I don't like about consignment shops is it sits on a shelf. You're not there to explain it to them, what it's good for, what you use it for. I like the interaction with people. That's where you make your most money is when you can interact with people. So it's all really, that's all I'm going to say for today. They are my tips and tricks to how I make my money on my bombs, my creams, my soaps at, at craft shows. And I love the socialization with people. Um, you know, it can be a really fun day. I even go around and buy off of other craft vendors. I go and buy soap off ever other craft vendors. So, um, again, that's just my tips and tricks on how to sell and how I make money at craft shows. And don't get discouraged because you could do all those tricks and it still could be a lousy craft show. It depends on the weather. It depends on what people are coming for. It depends on what they're looking for. So, but you need to get involved at your stand with your customers, with your product. And that is the best way on how to make money at craft shows and farmers markets or, or markets in general. Okay. All right. So I'm so happy to talk to you today. As you can see, I'm very passionate at what I do and I love talking to people and therefore I'll have enough to pay our cruise off in April. I just made enough to pay it off. So this is why I do my craft. People have other reasons. It's also relaxing. So whatever your reason is for doing your hobby, your craft or whatever, I hope you all do well with it. And I hope that these tips really helped you to go and sell. And if they did, please let me know. Leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe button, and the little bell. I need watch hours. I'm trying to at least hit the $500, or, or I'm sorry, the 500 subscriber mark. Um to help bring you more videos because then there's more opportunities. But I also need the watch hours. Please watch it through, watch my video through. Don't just watch a few couple things of it because you're not getting the essence of my videos. I know it can be long at times and I apologize, but it's important information that I'm trying to pass on to you. So please subscribe, like, and watch my videos on my channel. So again, this is Sandy Myers, and my craft is Farm Country Soap. And as far as that, I'll bring another video to you because next time I'm probably going to talk to you about selling on Etsy, your highs and your pitfalls. Okay, so see you next time, and thanks for watching on my tips and tricks on how to sell and make money at craft fairs and markets. Thanks. See you again. Bye-bye.